extracts from the play Juno and the Picker by Sean O'Casey. It is set against the backdrop. <laughs> it is set, set against the backdrop of the Civil War in a time of high unemployment. Jerry Devine is try, tries to help Boyle get a job. However, Boyle fears the job might be bad for the pains in his legs. Juno is, however, unimpressed by Boyle's attempts to avoid employment, and she still lets him know. Meanwhile, Jerry lets Mary know his feelings for her. However, his love is unrequited. <laughs> Oh, here you are at last. 
I've been searching for you everywhere. The foreman of Foley's told me you hadn't left a stroke of jobs, sir. Ten minutes, Foley went in. And he'd swear on the Holy Prayer Room. He wasn't in no snook. What, what business is it of yours whether I was in any snook or another? You've you, you no know, you know right to go around and follow me. You're taking it out of you, Mr. Boy. I simply was anxious to do you a good turn. I have a message from you from Father Farr. He says if you go to the job, it's under rap, rap mines. And ask for four of them get a start. That's all right. But I don't want the most of my body to be watched the way the stroller would watch a stair. If you're following me, it said, you have no problem to be following me. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, that was it! my leg! Oh. I wouldn't let myself let down that easy, Mr. Boy. It lex size now, my dear, you all the good in the world. It's a doctor you should have been dividing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know nothing about the pains in your legs. I brought the message from Father Farrell, that's all I can do. Here, sit down and take your breath, and don't be acting as if you pull a wing out of a dead bee. I have no breath with that either. It had choked me after all that's been said. My little spirit left me still. Well, it's here, spirit. We can hit it once, grind our whole skin trousers. <laughs> I have to push off now, for I'm terribly late. But I was determined to stay and hunt that jock surround. <laughs> Where's Andy going? Don't break the mirror. I'm putting on my hat. Special word again, Mary. Come on, to allow me to be friendly to you. If I try, you deliberately misunderstand it. I didn't always misunderstand it. You're often delighted at the arms of Jerry around you. If you go on talking like this, Jerry, fine, you'll make me think. Well, did I be a wedding or awake? Listen, Mary, I'm standing for the second ship of our union. There's only one opposed me, a popper old men and a good speaker. All are saying they'll get elected. Well? Well, Mary, the charge of 350 pounds a year. You and I could live nice and cozy on that. You would get out of this place, then. I haven't time to listen to you now. I have to go. Then what's come over you the last few weeks of me? You hardly speak to me then you want to face a bitterness on it. Have you forgotten, Mary, all that happy evenings are as sweet as a scent of fog or shit? Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Bert. You won't be long time to go far better than I am for your sweetheart. Never! Never, Mary! No matter what happens, you'll always be the same for me. I must be off. Please let me go, Cherry. I'll go with the wisdom. You needn't hang, so what's the matter with yourself? You're going to be another fella. You kicked on someone else, my lady. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 